All right, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to the Creative Truth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Raz. And I'm Tyler. And today we're going to talk about automation tools to speed up your creative business. Okay, I'll start with the easy one, uh, Zapier. Uh, it is a tool where you can... Yes, a lot like one the title is going to talk about probably next. We'll just get these easy ones out of the way. But it's, you know, this, then that. You know, it's, <laughs> a lot I don't know how to explain it without saying this, then that now. But um, so Zapier, basically, you have something like Facebook. And every time uh, you need to make an action on Facebook, every time you get a like on Facebook, you can tweet that like or have that like shared to you on Evernote or, you know, stuff like that. So it's just an easy way to... Um, interact and engage your audience or it's an easy way to share blog posts every time a blog post happens on your 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 website you can go straight to facebook so it's just an easy way to share uh in my head it is that's what it's that's what it's great for an easy way to promote yourself on social media zapier so yeah i don't use zapier but i use ift which is uh if that then this which is basically a logic function and similar to zapier you basically connect your different accounts I use it for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can connect to your Gmail. You can connect to your Nest if you want. And it, and it hooks right up to your phone. So you could say that, like, while I'm within these geographic coordinates, put my phone on silent. Or, like, when I'm home, turn my thermostat down. Um, I don't use it for anything that complex. The one thing I use it for, for every single social media platform, is to automatically tweet my Instagram posts as native photos. Hmm. And... Uh, and the reason is Facebook owns Instagram and Twitter is its own beast and they don't like each other. They don't play nice. So mm-hmm. you basically have to have this third party to communicate between the two platforms to tweet out your photos as uh, as native photographs instead of just a link that says Instagram.com slash da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Click here to see more. And uh, if you haven't noticed already, social media platforms are going more visual. That's why we're visual artists, creatives. And uh, so you want your your feed to stand out or your posts on the feed to stand out. And I'll get I'll get into why, uh, how and why Facebook and Instagram can be used as distribution hubs a little bit later on in this video. Yeah. Yeah. Or this um, podcast. And as far as Zapier goes, like it's Zapier and I have TTT if it's basically the same thing. Zapier is just a paid uh, paid app where you have to pay for it. And I have TTT is free. Uh, so there's pros and cons to paid versus free but they both work they both work great i've used both of them um i haven't used them in a while but i've used both of them before and they both work great um so i guess uh you want to talk about schedule once yeah i can do schedule once so schedule once is something that saved me a lot of headaches uh with one of my recent podcasts called uh leadership forum international and what it does is it it so schedule once will sync with your Google calendar or whatever calendar you want, Outlook, Google, Yahoo, whatever. And it will sync with that calendar. And all you have to do is send guests or clients or customers a link, a schedule once link. Very easy. I sent it in, I made a template email and I sent it with the, with the email describing the entire show and what was to be expected anyway. And then it will match up, you know, the guests will be able to look at your calendar and look at that calendar at the same time. And you don't have to do all the back and forward uh, for scheduling. So I, I filmed every Tuesday at noon. So whenever I sent them the link, it had every Tuesday at noon that was open uh, for me, you know, and for my for my guests, uh, for my host of Leadership Forum International. And they can look and see, you know, OK, I'm free this day. He's free this day. And it was just linked together like that. You don't have to say, OK, I'm free on the 8th and the 12th at 10 a.m. It just it's just it saves like it saves hours of time really. You, you only have to schedule once. Then. Yeah, you only have to schedule it once. That's right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, and it's beautiful. And they'll send like follow up emails. It connects to Mailchimp, so you can get it in an automation schedule. Like once they once they sign in, it connects to Zapier and IFTT. T. So it's this uh, amazing uh, product. It's also paid. Uh, I'm sure there's a free version, pre, but I, I did a paid version. It was worth it. Um, the next tool I want to talk about is MailChimp. And MailChimp is, uh, if you're in the business of marketing your company, you have to do that on a number of different platforms. 
uh, you sh you know you've got to have a website. You got to be doing some word of mouth networking. Uh, you should be on social media, if especially if you're in a visual um, field like videography or graphic design or anything like that. Uh, then you want to you know showcase your work visually. And the other thing that you maybe not you aren't doing right now that you should be doing. Um, and maybe the reason you're not is because it seems very daunting and that's email marketing and email marketing is really a gold mine. Um, mm. and it's kind of like a next level thing if you can automate it. And I think the reason why a lot of people either avoid email marketing or kind of put it off is because it, it can be a very time consuming thing. Um, but what, you know, the, what the advantage of email marketing and I, I bring up MailChimp because if you haven't noticed the trend here, I like the free tools. <laughs> there's Constant Contact, there's Razor's Edge, there's a number of different yeah. uh, email marketing tools, but MailChimp is free up to 2,000 emails a month. As of uh, July 2019, you know, that could change all the time. But uh, it is a free tool if you're just starting out, get your feet wet. It's got templates built for you, you import your list. Where, where automation comes in is if you have a website, and you've got a form on your website, you can link, whether it's Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, whatever, you can link your form to WordPress to have people opt into your email list. And then you can market emails to them. And that could be um, a monthly newsletter that you do where you announce new things going on with your business. Or it could be a, an automated drip campaign where somebody visits your website um, because you say, uh, hey, this month we're going to give away uh, an e-course on, uh, I'll just give the one example I always give, which is wedding videography. Uh, to get this free e-course, you know, sign up to receive our newsletter. They sign up and then you hit them with, you know, as soon as they sign up, they opt in. A week later, they get another email. A week after that, um, they get a, a, thir a second email. And then a month after that, they get a sales pitch. Um, so they've kind of built this communication and it's all automated. Now setting this up up front is a little time consuming, but it pays big dividends down the road once you have this kind of system set up for marketing. Um, and then also connecting your MailChimp account to your website and building that list. Even if you're not doing the email marketing yet, you're automatically building that list up and, and getting people to give you their information as long, and like, as long as you're ethical about it and, um, you know, treating them, treating their information, you know, with the privacy that you should. Yeah. Um, so MailChimp and uh, drip campaigns and email marketing is a very powerful underutilized tool for creative professionals like yourself. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that is because creatives, a lot of times, and we should create a product for this, honestly, but yeah. <laughs> creatives a lot of times don't take the time to market themselves. Yep. As, as much as they should. They're, they spend, they're spending their time doing it for the client. Doing it for the client. Yeah. And they're not doing anything for themselves. Uh, so, you know, so just, just think about that. Like you started, you got into business because you love doing what you're doing and you think you could help other people, but you also want to grow your business. You don't just want to get stuck um, doing, you know, you don't want to just get stuck being busy and not really working on your business, you know, instead of working in your business. So think about that. Um, There's a book on that one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. The, yeah. e, the e myth or the yeah. e myth revisited to all talks about working on your business versus in your business and what stepping away from the daily tasks and thinking like an entrepreneur, how that can help grow and scale your business. So I definitely re I can't remember who wrote that one either. I never can. Michael Gerber. Michael Gerber. Something the e myth. Like is that right? Yeah, that sounds yeah. right. Um, so definitely check that book out if you can. Yep. Um, the next one I had for you Boomerang. Boomerang. Yeah. Yeah. So. Boomerang is a lifesaver for me and for you if you haven't heard of it, it's a Gmail plugin and you know you just if you're using Chrome you just plug it into Chrome or you go to the Chrome app store whatever it's called pl plugin store and you look up Boomerang and what it does is is it allows you to um, send emails later so you can schedule like emails when you're replying to a client so a lot of times creatives I know I am I know Tyler is but most of us are we're up at midnight 2 a.m 3 a.m 4 a.m when the world's quiet and we have time and it's dark outside nobody's moving around nobody's bothering us we just have time to really think and focus and get into that creative mindset so we're up at this time but we you know like it doesn't look good to like really send a bunch of emails at 4 a.m 
So what Boomerang does is it allows you to schedule an email. So if I'm up at four, I finish editing a podcast, I want to send it to a client the next, you know, the next morning, but I know good well I'm not going to be up at 6 a.m. I can still send the email at 6 a.m. using Boomerang. And you just have just click. It'll be after you install the plugin, it'll be a little red button that says send later. I use it every day and I send it a lot of times. I'll, I'll pretend like I'm a really good businessman and I got my stuff together and I'm up early. So I said it like 6.30, 7 o'clock to make people feel bad about themselves. <laughs> Well, that's that's definitely like a a positive. But I I was just thinking that I should start utilizing this because if you get in the habit of sending people emails back at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, Mm -hmm. then they're thinking, well, why isn't he answering me? He's ignoring Mm -hmm. me or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's a big part of it, too. I'm guilty of that. Yeah, that's a big part of it, too, because I don't, you know, after a certain hour, I stop replying to emails. Most of the time, I don't even read them. Like, I'll see them come through, but I just I just won't read them until the next morning because that's just that's just more to think about, you know. Yep. You got personal life and family, and the last thing you need is to let business kind of interfere with that. That's right. You also said that it um, allows you to read emails later on. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't used this uh, a lot. I think I've used it once. But instead of, um, so like if you see an email that's important and you're like, okay, I need to get back to this, but I know I'm going to forget about it. It allows you to like boomerang. I think that's where the name comes from. But you can send the email. You can hit like, remind me of this email and it'll send it back to you later on like the next day or in an hour and two hours when you know you'll have more free time to think about it not this boomerang i don't get that the instagram one uh they like this a loop that's what they call that one that's what, that's what people might be thinking of everyone just goes like this and then it loops it <laughs> If you're listening, that's not going to make sense. So check us out on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I have one last tool, and for me, and then uh, if yeah. Rez says anything else, we can he can go, and then he's got a. I'm sure he's got a moment of truth for you. But the last thing I wanted to talk about is just your your general social media automation. And back back in the early days, uh, when no one really knew what it meant to be a community management. Uh, to do community management or to work as a social media professional uh, as like a full-time thing. It was kind of like just tacked on to people's jobs. And there were these tools like Hootsuite and TweetDeck that integrated with your social media accounts where you could basically link all your accounts and then just like blast your content on the different platforms. And that was not the best way to do things for a number of reasons. So I'm actually recommending to automate your business not going through a third party and going directly to specifically Facebook and Instagram. Um, So the the one problem with blasting your audience uh, with the same content on every platform at the same time is that there, what's the point of following you on, I don't know when that got there. Is it still rolling on the camera? Yeah. All right. Um, There's no real point in blasting your audience with the same message at the same time on the different platforms. Cause like, what's the point of following you on these different accounts if they're just receiving the same content. And then also each platform has a different demographic. Um, Facebook at, at least nowadays is kind of an older demographic, whereas Instagram is going to be like more of a younger uh, demo. Um, and then, uh, so then the other part of it is that as Facebook and, and Twitter and Instagram got kind of, aware that people were going to this third party they were thinking well maybe this is something we could bring in house so facebook added a lot more tools about scheduling and insights and uh managing different pages with the facebook business manager that it didn't originally provide and that allowed you to manage multiple pages and schedule content and everything else so the uh, so currently depending on what brand I'm doing social media marketing for, I will use Facebook or Instagram as kind of my content distribution hub, which is like a term that probably exists, but I'm making it up right now. I'm also, I'm assigning it to, uh, to what I mean here. And that is, uh, if I'm a, a visual company that has a younger demographic, I'm going to use Instagram as my content distribution hub. And what I'll do is I will post the image directly to Instagram. And then I will just copy paste my hashtags and website from a uh, Google Docs folder or sheet, paste it into the into the comment or into the uh, caption of the photo. And then I'll have it automatically tweet to Twitter with mm-hmm. ift. 
And then if it makes sense, maybe not every time, but every couple times or when it makes sense, when it's a really uh, prominent photo, I'll push it to Facebook by just hitting, putting share to Facebook. Mm. And, then it, and then it goes to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, but not every time, just some of the time. And then, uh, and then what, what that does with Twitter is for whatever reason, Twitter actually helps your website rank and build these backlinks. Mm. So if you search, if you search like your name, for instance, or your company, probably what you'll find if you have like a decent web pre presence is it'll be your website and then your Twitter account. And then at least this is the way it's been for a while. And it, it could change because these things change every day, but then maybe like your, or it should be your LinkedIn, your YouTube account, and then way down the bottom would be Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so, so if you're not as much of a, a younger demographic or a visual organization, but you use Facebook a lot or LinkedIn a lot, um, you can you can use Facebook as that hub and schedule your posts out. And then if it makes sense, you can copy paste to Instagram or LinkedIn. Um, so, but basically you're just trying to minimize your effort and automate that effort and, and get the multiple, for the time you spend, you want people to see it in multiple locations and at multiple times. And you want as many eyes on that piece of content, especially if you're taking the time to write something out. Um, so maybe you adapt it for each platform or, or adjust accordingly, but um, really just using the tools, including the analytics that Facebook and Instagram have laid out for you uh, to just maximize uh, your content. That's, that's like my strategy. And if you want me to talk on that subject further and actually give a demo and do some screen capture, please let us know. Um, send us an email, or if you're watching this on YouTube, drop us a comment below. Yeah. Even if it's two years from now, and you see we haven't done it yet. Yeah, because I'll be up to date on whatever the latest <laughs> That's right, yeah. is at that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I guess that made me think about something, uh, using your Google Sheets and as a hub. But anyway, um, another like bonus, and I won't go into it too much because I haven't used it a lot, but it's, it's, it's a bonus, and they have, they're the same concept. One is called Recur Post, and I have tried this before, and one is called Meet Edgar, or just Edgar. Have you heard of these? No. So what they do is they you can – Upload a image with description, and you can say, "Do this every six months," you know, and you can like every or like do it once a year, once a year on February twelfth, or once a year on Valentine's Day, do this post, that type of thing. So every year you'll just have a calendar of stuff that's going to go out recurrently every year. So this way it won't get lost on Twitter, it won't get lost on Instagram. Like if you have a really nice piece of content, like this video, for example. Right, and we're we're not we're only going to share it once, but instead of doing that, a lot of people aren't going to see it, so it'll be reshared on Facebook in six months, or it'll be reshared on Facebook in ten months. You know what I mean? So it's not just a scheduler, but it's a recurring scheduler. Okay. So that your best content doesn't get lost in in a feed. It seems crazy to schedule out months in advance or a year in advance, and I think straight to Facebook you can only go six months, but. There's no reason not to, right? You know, there's no reason not to schedule out, right? You know, things change, but if there's, you know, Valentine's Day isn't going away, Valentine's right? Yeah, Valentine's, <laughs> more, yeah. You have all these holidays that you're gonna do similar stuff on, and like I said, like if you just have great content that a lot of people aren't seeing, and you a year from now you're gonna have a ton more. Hopefully, you'll have a ton more followers. They're gonna want to see this great content. This is an easy way for you to share that content with them over and over again. Oh yeah, there's no you know? reason not to sh yeah. share more than once. That's right. Yeah. Sure. So. So that's that's the beauty of like Recur Post or Meet Edgar. I think Recur Post is free, or they have like a freemium model, and Meet Edgar is uh, definitely paid 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 subscription. Uh, so moment of truth. It kind of goes along with what we were, what we were saying earlier. Um, long story short, is that you can't see the forest for the trees. You know, like you have you can't you have to work on your business and in your business. So it's just. Just remind yourself sometimes just to take a step back, just and, and look at the big picture of what you're doing. Like every every time we shoot a new one of these videos before and after the show, we're talking like big picture plans, like where we want to go, where we want to take it, what our next goals are, how how we're going to get a legit studio, you know, what speaking engagements we're going to do, what clients we're working with. So you have to like work, you know, like how we're going to improve it, you know, because every you have to like step back sometimes and just take stock. Whether it's life, whether it's business, whether it's creativity, you have to take a step back and just think about how can I improve my life, 
you know, from this moment forward. Like, so what can I cut out? What's what's hurting me right now? And what can I let go of? You know, what can I add to my life that will improve it? So that's that's the moment of truth is like sometimes just just take a step back. Like this weekend we went to Amelia Island, had a good time and I got a lot of work done actually. Uh, even with the kids there because I was just wasn't like I wasn't in my house. I wasn't in my normal surroundings and I was able to take a step back and think about what I really wanted, you know, and that's that's the beauty of, um, you know, having a business and being a creative is that that just a few few of those moments where you just take that time time away from the, the daily grind. Just a few of those moments can work wonders for you know, your business and your life and your health and well-being and mindset and everything. So that's it. Yeah, if you're a creative person, then you can do it differently than everyone else is doing it. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's going to be able to change and adapt the world around you to fit the way you see it. Uh, and not everyone, people that aren't creative professionals or creative individuals don't have that luxury. So we have something special. And so... We can shape the world around us and uh, just, just be grateful for that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you don't have you don't have any competition. Maybe that'll be my next moment of truth. But that like you don't have competition. Like, you're creative. Like whatever you do is what you do. And there's going to be an audience for that. You know, if you were an insurance agent, it's only so, you know, what I'm saying it's only certain rates you can offer. If you're a real estate, your your commission is going to be the same no matter what type of house you sell. If you're a plumber. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to be that much different. But as a creative, you can, like, shape the world around you, do what you love doing, and make a difference in somebody's life just from an idea in your mind. So so that's that's the, that's the moment of the truth. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, uh, we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, this week's episode of The Creative Truth is sponsored by... T Associates LLC. Uh, T Associates is a production company based out of Savannah, Georgia, specializing in wedding and corporate videos. We can be found on social media at T Associates or online at theTassociates.com. Cool. And the other sponsor is Podcast on the Go, podonthego.com. You can find us anywhere at Pod on the Go. Uh, we specialize in producing podcasts and launching them successfully. We specialize in live streaming, sports, and events, and speaking engagements at conferences, and all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, you can reach out to us at podonthego.com. To learn more about the creative truth, visit us on social media at We Create Truth or online at creative-truth.com. And that's it for tonight. Man. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, everybody out there for watching.